Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Steve again, Harmless Rebel. Time for another hard rock and uh, heavy metal update. Uh, maybe some punk in this one. I can't remember. Uh, but let's jump in and see. Uh, first up, I ended my last video, my last metal video, I believe, with Crowbar. And I'm uh, starting with Crowbar again. I was really happy when I saw that this was finally getting a repress. They pressed the vinyl a couple years ago. It was a limited run. And they're going for over a hundred bucks. Um, this one is another limited pressing. I can't remember how many they said it was. Maybe it's five hundred or a thousand. Um, these are going to sell out fast if they haven't already. Um, highly recommend grabbing them. Not only is this my favorite Crowbar album, um, if I were to do a list of my top hundred metal albums of my top hundred favorite metal albums of all time, this would probably be in the top twenty. I love this album. It's super dark. Um, he's really dealing with his demons in this one. Um, he was uh, pretty steeped in alcoholism still at this point. And uh, it's, it's just a phenomenal album. As a matter of fact, they're coming here in February or March. And I can't wait to see them live. Um, I've never seen Crowbar before. And they're coming with Sacred Reich, which is an all-time favorite of mine. Um, so, But this is uh, Odd Fellows Rest from Crowbar. Um, this is one I bought the day it came out on CD. And I played this nonstop in my car for months and months and months um uh within a couple weeks i knew every word on this album it's every riff every uh, you know it it's just so good um highly recommend this one uh they did a custom splatter on this and this is one of the few albums where the splatter actually looks like splatter um it, it's pretty cool uh, here is the record really dig this one um again uh, really happy to finally have this one on vinyl this is the one this one has been um on my grail list for for quite some time and i've almost broken down a couple times and paid it, before it went over you know when you could still get it for like 50 or 60 bucks i almost broke down a few times to get it i'm glad i waited um i think i paid under 30 bucks for it i, um, I can't remember off the top of my head um, again, though, if they're still available, um, grab one while you can, because they will sell out quick. Uh, next up, um, this next one is, so the story behind this one is I got a call from Billy Hurst, I don't know, two months ago, three months ago. Um, he asked me if I was interested in this. Uh, he found an original pressing of this record. Um, asked me if I was interested in it or if I uh, knew anything about it, if I knew any guys that would be interested in it. Uh, my first thought was to call Metal Theologian um, and uh, have him uh, kick it around to a couple of his uh, new wave of uh, British uh, heavy metal collectors. You know, a lot of those guys pay really big money for, for these pressings. Um, it's a really limited pressing. Uh, the originals go for over a thousand bucks. And this, the one he got was uh, Dead Men. I wasn't willing to pay that kind of money. Um, Aaron wasn't, obviously. And uh, he didn't know anybody that would, that would pay that kind of cash. But uh, when I was doing some research helping Billy put, the, put a price to it, um, I saw that it was getting a repress or it just had a repress. So this is, uh, what is it? Uh, from the Fjords, from Legend. Really good album. Um it's listed in most places as new wave of traditional heavy metal. It's from 79. So maybe, uh, it's, it's definitely more of that seventies hard rock sound than, than what I would consider new wave of traditional metal. Uh, or I'm sorry, a new wave of British heavy metal, though. There are quite a few new wave of British heavy metal bands that, that were more of that seventies hard rock sound. So, um, you know, it, it's kind of borderline. Um, uh, Colt Metal, who, or I'm sorry, Colt Rock Classics, uh, did a killer job on this, though. Uh, it's black vinyl. I think they did a color vinyl version, too. Um, it also comes with a CD called Before the Fjord. Um, they did a pressing of Before the Fjord on vinyl a year or two ago, and those are already going for like 40 bucks. I, I don't know that I would want that on vinyl. I'm cool with having that on CD. It was a fun listen, um, but I prefer the album versions. Um, half of this album is phenomenal. About half of it are, is just really good. And then half of it's just okay. Um, that being said, that's the way a lot of the, the, that era, uh, especially the new wave of British heavy metal stuff was. Um, as, as Aaron's pointed out in a bunch of his videos, sometimes those singles are the best things, the, the best things that those bands ever released. And uh, um, 
I would take it a little further. Like I said, about five of these songs on here are phenomenal, and then again, five of them are just are just good. Um, still, for twenty two bucks or twenty three bucks, whatever I paid for this, um, it's a hundred percent worth it. If you're into seventies um, hard rock, late seventies hard rock, new wave of British heavy metal, um, I definitely recommend that one. Next up, I was super excited when this one got released, or um, when I found out this one was getting released. Uh, I actually found out about this one from Dwayne, uh, from Lazarus. Uh, he, on one of the, was it maybe on YouTube, I'm sorry, maybe on Facebook, he posted a, a picture of this. Um, and as soon as I saw it, I went and ordered it right away. Uh, it's from Jolly Roger Records, and everything that they've pressed so far sells out super fast. They've done one other EP from Gravedigger, and they also did uh, um, uh, Dr. Butcher, uh, which I'll talk about in a future video, because the Dr. Butcher is phenomenal. Um, I haven't listened to the album yet, or the, L, or the, the LP yet, but I've had the CD uh, for, for years and years. So, uh, But the Gravedigger Ballad of Mary, uh, this is such a good EP. Um, the, the song Ballad of Mary, I, I, I've always liked that, uh, that song. Uh, this is off, I believe it's the second album. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it's the second album from the Scotland series. And... Uh, um, it's just phenomenal. He's got uh, it's him and Doro. Um, he also does a song on here with uh, Hansi Kirscher from uh, Blind Guardian. That's also phenomenal. Um, just a killer five song EP. Uh, let's see. So it's three songs, and you've got the two instrumentals as well. Um, it sounds phenomenal. This is the red version. Um, they call it dark red. It's really like a pinkish purple uh, as opposed to dark red. Um, I don't think that was their plan. I would think they were going more for, you know, like the, the red right here. And it just didn't come out that way, which um, if you've ever uh, or if you, you've ever tried to get something impressed uh, uh, in color, it just doesn't always come out the way you plan on it. Um, they hand numbered them. This is number 56 out of 100. Uh, they did 100 on the red vinyl, and I think they did 300 on black vinyl. Uh, if you're a, a Gravedigger fan, get this while you can. Uh, the last Gravedigger EP that they released last year, um, the one that's limited to 100 is already going for well over 100 bucks. So I missed out on that one. Um, I was able to get the black vinyl. I was looking today, though. There's still copies of both available on Discogs. Um, you're going to pay the shipping, though. Uh, you know, and that's that's the one thing that sucks about um, Jolly Roger. They sell out fast. So if you don't, uh, it's, it's uh, the same as No Remorse Records, man. Some of their exclusives, if you don't order them right away, they're going to sell out and you're just going to be ass out after that because they're going to go for crazy money. Uh, next up, we got two from the great and powerful Mortification. Um, it's funny. I have always said that this particular album is my favorite Mortification album. Um, and after listening to it a couple times now, um, after a number of years, I would say it's number four or five. Um, I loved this album when it came out. Um, it, it was a different sound for the band uh, that I really enjoyed. However, um, you know, the older I get, the more I am uh, pulled back to those first few albums from Mortification. But the, I'm, I got to look at it. I always get it backwards. Envision Evangeline. I always say that one backwards. Uh, fantastic album. I was super happy when they, when they announced that they were releasing this one to vinyl. Um, again, it, it's one of my favorites, and uh, I have a lot of great memories of this one. Um, it's funny when you look at the art. I never noticed how good the artwork was on here um, on the CD. Um, the detail is phenomenal. And what's always killed it is the, the banner. But if you look at the artwork all the way around the banner, it's just killer. And it's super detailed. Um, I wish they would have done something else with this. But uh, just a phenomenal album. I'm, I'm really happy to finally have this one um, on vinyl. Um, I mean, that, nothing else I can say there. And then uh, also released with that one, they also released Triumph of Mercy, which has always been my least favorite Mortification album, um, mainly because of the production. Um, Steve Rowe, I don't remember if this was the first one that he produced by himself. I feel like it is. Um, after he opened Ro uh, Rose Studios, I think this was the first one that he recorded. And uh, the mastering was just, it wasn't good. The bass was all the way forward, and it just never sounded good to me. 
which was sad because it, it this is his most personal album. This is the one he wrote right after beating cancer. Um, so this one goes in depth into um, his emotions and just uh, what he faced. Um, so phenomenal writing, but the production's always been horrible. It's still not perfect, but they cleaned it up quite a bit. It sounds a hundred times better than the CD did. So I'm really happy to finally have a really nice sounding copy of this one. And you got him uh, uh, being carried on the wings of the angel. And then uh, on the back, um, the hell of cancer and then salvation. Um, really, really good album though. Really happy to finally have that one on vinyl as well. And a nice sounding copy. Um, this next one was a disappointment to me. Um, I love this band. Uh, this was, they basically took the, their three EPs. I believe it was three. It may have been two. Um, Luminous Eyes, uh, Mosaic Visions, which Mosaic Visions is my favorite release from Haunt. And, uh, was the other one as Fire Burns? I, I can't remember. It, it may be three EPs. It may be two. But basically, they took their EPs. Um, uh, Trevor Church re-recorded them and added synths to them. Now, had I not heard him or read an interview where he said that he added synths to the songs or brought the synths out more, um, I wouldn't have noticed it. Um, and honestly, of all the recordings from Haunt... Um, this is the worst sounding. The, the, um, it's just not the, the best pressing. Um, I was happy with the EPs. Uh, you know, I mean, it's kind of cool that he did this. Um, and, and the thing with Haunt, I didn't even, I would have ordered it anyway, but I didn't, I thought it was a new album when I recorded it. I didn't realize it was, it was just the EPs being brought together. Uh, again, with the production or, or maybe just the pressing quality, you can't really hear, uh, the keyboards to it. Uh, Mosaic Visions, like I said, it's my favorite release from... Actually, speaking of Mosaic Visions... And I don't even know if that's still available. I mean, that one, I would say, if you're a, a hardcore um, haunt collector like I am, grab it. Um, otherwise, you may want to pass on that one. Um, speaking of Mosaic Visions, though, a couple of months ago, maybe a month ago, uh, Trevor posted on his Facebook. He was doing a really limited run of this. So I, I went ahead and uh, grabbed one. This is number 15 of 25. It's uh, the Mosaic Visions EP, uh, signed by Trevor. Um, this is the only one that he's done on this color. And I think it's a completely different cover than the original uh, cassette as well. And then it came with this poster, which is uh, really killer artwork. This will end up on my wall. And uh, that's signed in number to match the cassette as well and it wasn't some something crazy i think it, i think it was like 20 bucks for this i thought it was a, a cool little collector deal though i love when bands do little stuff like this um so as soon as he posted it, i had to grab it. his stuff sells so fast um i'm pretty sure this sold out uh within a day or so if even if it even took that long but uh so haunt next up Man, I can't believe I found this record for 20 bucks. I think I paid $19.99 for it. Such a great record. Such a great band. Um, I don't hear enough people from uh, the vinyl community talk about them. And, and I'm amazed that I got that this was still, or that this was even in a local record store. I never see anything from this band in any record stores. But this is Empire of the Undead from Gamma Ray. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal album. Um, Avalon is my favorite. It's probably my favorite Kai Hansen song, um, but it's definitely my favorite of the uh, the Gamma Race uh, albums. As a matter of fact, before I go any further, I believe I have one more Gamma Ray here. There we go. Um, this one I do have to thank Lazarus for. This was a Europe-only Record Store Day release, I believe, last year. And uh, he caught that they had a few of them on, um, on Amazon. Uh, so as soon as he mentioned it, I, I went and ordered one right away. Unfortunately, mine, I don't know if you can see it, but mine arrived with a seam split. Um, and I couldn't return it because they had sold out already. This is number 1,081 of 1,500. I can't believe that these didn't sell out in Europe. But this is To The Metal, uh, another phenomenal uh, album from Gamma Ray. Um, Gamma Ray is just, I love Kai Hansen, you know, he... I've loved everything he's released, whether it was Halloween, Gamma Ray. I just bought, um, is it Omnisphere? I haven't checked it out yet. That was another one that Lazarus uh, 
told me about um or i saw him post and we 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 commented back and forth about it um so uh i ordered that as well their second album i haven't found their first album yet uh next up madros i've showed this before i pulled it out gave it a couple more spins i've just been in kind of a uh in the mood to hear them lately uh I, we, we just got their debut on vinyl which is by far my favorite release from madros but um just a killer California technical death metal band or technical thrash band. Uh, the, et the Essence of Time matches no flesh. Oops, almost dropped it. Let's see. Don't need to show that. Uh, next up, Messiah. Had this for a while. Um, I was really... Uh, I had never heard of this band. Um... And then when I saw that they were pressing these, I checked them out and I, and I really dug their stuff. Um, hard rock, metal, some really cool guitar riffs and solos. Um, kind of a power metal sound, early power metal sound. Um, just really killer though. Uh, this is their 85 EP. Let's see, with a few demos on here from 79 as well. Uh, really killer. If you can still find these, uh, grab them. This is their 85 EP. Their 84 full length was also repressed. Um, I paid quite a bit for these because I, I had them... Uh, were they, was it Europe? I can't remember if we ordered them from Europe or Australia. But it's Cult Metal Classics who always do killer uh, pressings. Uh, but now you can find the black, not, I, I don't remember, this is like purple or blue. You can find the black vinyl pressings for, for like 30 bucks though now. Um, and I think we paid more than that, especially with shipping for these. But original pressings for this, um, only I've only seen one that's ever sold and it's sold for over a thousand bucks. Um, the, 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 their debut LP, those original pressings sell for four or five hundred bucks. Um, they're phenomenal, definitely worth grabbing. Next up, I pulled this out for the anniversary. This is an original pressing of Load, everybody's least favorite album. Um, I don't want to say it's their least favorite album, but but one of the... An album that was a disappointment to a lot of people. Um, initially, I was disappointed by it. Over time, it grew on me. Maybe because the radio played it nonstop. Um, I think it's a killer album. Uh, it, you know, Obviously, it's not thrash. It's not metal. Uh, for the most part, it's it's uh, heavy blues rock, um, which I really dig. Uh, you know, I wasn't even super disappointed that they changed their sound again. Um, my only disappointment with this album is they should have cut it in half. Uh, it's like an hour and 40 minutes, hour and 30 minutes. Um, even though I like the whole album, man, you get like 50 minutes into it and you're like, fuck, man, this thing is still going. Um the, the hits that are on here are fantastic songs. I think load and reload. I think if they would have edited them, edited, excuse me, edited themselves, um, they would have done a lot better and wouldn't have gotten as much hate as they did. Um, I know that they, they were, their goal was, Hey, we're giving you 140 minutes of new, of new material, but it, it was just too much. Uh, had they, had they edited this down and edited, reload down they probably could have got a third album of really good material um as opposed to two double albums that were just way too freaking long but uh it was the anniversary of this i pulled it out and gave it a couple of spins um like i said the, the stuff that's on here that's good is really good uh the rest of it it's, it's not bad it's just too much um so that's my two cents on load um start the 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 trash talking in the comments Next up, man, this is such a fantastic album. I don't know why I never got into this band when they came out. I mean, this era, I was real heavy into death metal. Uh, Carcass was by far my favorite. Um, but but there were a number of other bands I was really into. But man, Bolt Thrower, somehow I just never got into them. And this is so good. Um, this is uh, uh, The Fourth Crusade. 92 so i mean this was right at my peak when i was really oh man this one's got a seam split too damn 
I'm telling you, man, these seam splits are getting ridiculous. I'm getting so pissed off uh, with these labels. And, uh, you know, sadly, and this one's not a big deal because I didn't pay much for this. Uh, I think I paid like 16 bucks. But there's records I spent 50, 60 bucks on. And they got here with seam splits. And the label just kind of blows it off. They're like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you 10 bucks back, you know. Um, it just, it drives me crazy. It literally takes two seconds for them to open it up and pull the, the, the record out. Um, there are a lot, I, I am seeing more labels now. Roland Records, it comes to mind. There's a couple others, though, that give you the option to uh, have the record removed from the sleeve. And, and and shipped outside the sleeve to avoid this you know it's a real simple fix um another simple fix is to stop using these cheap ass mailers they're not that expensive i bought mailers myself and when you're doing hundred dollar orders and you put it in a, a two dollar mailer uh it's ridiculous um it's been driving me nuts but anyway killer 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 um death metal uh just slow and heavy which is my favorite kind of death metal that's part of my problem with modern death metal it's all about speed and going as fast as you can and it just bores the crap out of me i like really dynamic music early death metal was super dynamic and the bands just seen it. it's like power metal a lot of the uh, of the no-name uh, power metal bands just feel like they have to have double bass all the way through um, the songs and and there's a reason that nobody remembers their names but uh anyway fantastic uh death metal from bolt thrower uh two more uh baron cross this album's phenomenal um i haven't you know when was this this is a couple years old 94 is when this came out um, I loved the first three Baron Cross albums. Um, they're favorites of mine, and I just kind of lost track of them after that. I had heard a couple songs here and there that I didn't really like. Uh, but this, man, this is really good. I was really blown away by this one. Um, I really like the artwork that uh, Scott Waters did on this one. Um, it just came out phenomenal. And again, oh, this isn't the one. I thought this was the one that also came with a seam split. Um, Highly recommend picking this one up if it's still available, though. I'm not 100% sure if it is. Um, this was part of the limited run pressings. Uh, a lot of those sold out really quick. So, And then last but not least, this was like a $12 or $13 record at my local store. So I grabbed it. It looked like power metal. Um, oh, where are they from? I can't remember where they're from off the top of my head. Let's look it up. Oh, maybe Dutch. Let's see if it says, oh, Norwegian Swedish hard rock band. Um, so it's one of the guys. Give me a sec. Oh, it's going to drive me nuts. It's a super group. Um, the lead singer's been in a bunch of bands, Heads and Tails, Wigwam. Uh, let's see, Oli Ta, is that the one? He's been in like 15 bands, Albatross, Aunt Mary, Easy Riders, probably a bunch of bands none of us have ever heard of. But one of the guys is from a huge band that I like and that I'm sure a lot of you guys like as well. Oh no, that's right there, it's Victor. Yeah, so Victor Borg from TNT um, is in this band uh, on... Uh, is he the bass player? Yeah, he was a bass player in TNT. Um, this is just really good metal. Um, some really anthemic stuff. Um, you know, when you run across... You know, it, the cover doesn't look like much. You got the nice shot of the guys in the back. Bunch of older guys, you know. Um it's fantastic. I really, really enjoyed this one. Recommend picking it up. Um, just really good, really good heavy metal with uh, kind of a little, kind of a little, a little bit of power metal to it. Uh, it's phenomenal though. Highly recommend this one as well. And again, it's a cheap one. I think even online, even on uh, Amazon, it was like 19 bucks. So um, that's it, guys. Um, actually, this video went way longer than I thought it would. But uh, you guys take care. Um, I'll have something else up soon. Um, 
subscribe, all that good stuff. Bye.